Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer. Welcome to our channel, Jennifer Esquire Creations. I cannot believe it has taken me this long to make this video, but here we go. These are my tips for visually impaired artists. As a visually impaired artist, I've had to kind of maneuver and manipulate all of these tools to be able to work for me. And I'm just gonna give you guys a couple of tips that have helped me uh, learn how to use this stuff. And if you guys are visually impaired as well, maybe these tips might help you. So let's start out with Photoshop. Getting to know the layout can be a little intimidating. Like for me, when I'm sitting at my computer monitor, I cannot see any of these things at all or what they say. I know what they say because I've memorized them, but I don't, I couldn't read this to you if I couldn't even really pick these out 100% either. I've just, I've memorized everything. So I'm going to show you a little tip of what I did in the beginning to learn how all of this stuff works. All right, guys, I'm recording this with my cell phone. So pardon me if it's a little bit shaky, but I wanted to give you an example of what I do. So for me as somebody with visual impairment, all of these things right here, I cannot read them. <laughs> so I use my cell phone to magnify things. So what I do is I'll just zoom in and I can then read things. And once I get an idea of where everything is, I'm sorry, this is like super grainy. Let's try to move it back a little bit. Then I end up memorizing this stuff. But in the beginning, when I'm first learning a program or learning how to use anything, I will completely zoom this in and just use my phone as a guide. And I know that footage was a little grainy, but hopefully that helped you guys out and everybody has a smartphone these days. So hopefully you'll be able to use that tip to help you learn how to use this software. The second thing I want to talk to you guys about is when you're actually drawing and coloring. All right, so we're going to do a very crude, simple drawing. So the first thing that I always do is I make a layer to go on top of the background layer. So we're going to do that right now. Boom. And then we're going to take our pen and we're going to draw, let's draw a simple square. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, there we go. Our simple square. So now we have, this is the background layer and then this is like our square layer. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer underneath the square layer. So let's just create a new layer here. And... This is going to be our colored in. So this is our ink layer. This is our color layer. And then this is our background layer. Okay, we're good. Good. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick a color, any color, just a random. Let's do this blue color here. Once we have the blue color chosen, we're just going to color it in real quick. Now, when I color stuff in, I color it in like this. I go outside of the lines and this is why. A lot of times if you just try to get inside the lines around the edges, you're going to have streaks and white spots. Now, as somebody who is visually impaired, you're not going to notice those things until it's like post-production and the job is already done and then you're like looking over your stuff. It, it can be very easy when you're visually impaired, especially if your vision is in any way, shape or form blurry, to notice a little white streak or a little splotch that's missing. So just when you color, just color outside the lines. And for me, what I like to do, because I like to color outside the lines, is I'll put each color in a separate layer. So like say if I wanted this to be blue and purple, I would just create another layer like that. And then we'll just go over here and we'll change the color to, I don't know, we'll just do this green, why not? Just making this hideous square and then I would just color this like this so that I can still go outside the lines but the colors are all separate and nothing kind of gets messed up. So now that I'm ready to say finalize this square and I'm ready to color outside the lines then you just go over here with your eraser. All right, so now that I have my eraser tool all good, I can just go through here and do my erasing and it's much neater and much easier and a lot less stress. Now this line, for whatever reason, this black line that is the square was not the most opaque. I forgot to change the settings. That's the only frustrating part is sometimes you have to 
what I would suggest if you're doing this is don't do what I just did and erase it all with a single stroke. Break up your strokes. This way, if you screw up, you don't have to restart. So I'm just going to erase this much of it like that. You, you would imagine that if this was a final piece, you'd be doing the whole thing. And now we're going to put the green and we're just going to erase part of the green like this. Okay, so now we have this green looking good. So now, as great as this is, you might miss certain parts because you're legally blind or because you're visually impaired. So of course you can zoom in and you can zoom in here. So if you see along the outside, there's a little bit of green here, you'd have to clean up. So every time I draw anything, I draw it piece by piece, I zoom it in. So if you've ever noticed any of my speed drawings in the past, and if you go check out any of those videos, you'll see that I do a lot of coloring in very zoomed in. Sometimes I even draw stuff very zoomed in because it's easier to work in a small space at a time than it is to try to do big strokes when, when you're visually impaired. Another advice tip that I can give you guys is if you are working on a light color, a bright color like this, and you have a white background, it might not stand out that well. So what I like to do is go over here, unlock this, make sure it's unlocked, and then change this to a different color that is gonna be more contrasting. So let's change this to black. You can always change it back, but... So now that it's black, if you see the blackness right here, you can see so much more where your mistakes are because you change the color. So now I can really, really get in here. Oops, I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong layer. Now I can really get in here and like clean it up and make it look pristine and perfect. I can really go to town and that works really, really well. And now let's say, for example, I'm gonna go in here and say that I was trying to color something in that was black, like this. Okay, this is not the most opaque, okay, there we go, we're just gonna have to do a couple of layers so I can really prove my point here. So this is black, now obviously black on black isn't gonna work, that's not gonna make a good background. So for that, you would definitely wanna change it to white or any other white, you know, bright color. That makes a big difference, we're just gonna Oop, change that up. But if you see here, now the black stands out against the white, but if you'll notice where this black is, the line completely disappears. So if you go and try to color outside the line, you're, it's gonna be, oops, I'm on my wrong layer again, guys. Hot mess alert, hot mess alert. If you go and try to do this, you, it's gonna be very difficult for you to figure out where the line is. So I have one more tip for you guys. When you're trying to erase black, just go to your, I don't know where it is here, but go to your, oh there it is, your opacity, and just turn down the opacity a little bit. And see it turns that into a gray? So now the black is gray, which is much easier to see, much easier to identify against your black line. And then you can just go in there like this. Just erase everything while well, I screwed up. I didn't do a very good job, but you guys get the idea. I'm just doing this to show you. So those are the tips I have uh, as a visually impaired artist that I've kind of cultivated and used over time to help me, uh, to help me understand how to do things and to help me understand how to navigate this digital art landscape. Hopefully this video has come in handy and helped you if you are a new artist to digital painting and you have vision problems, even if you don't have vision problems, hopefully this has helped you in general. If you guys want more videos like this, then comment below and let me know and I'll see what other tips I can come up with. In the meantime, I encourage you guys to check out some of my speed drawings so you can see these things in action with some serious looking art, <laughs> not just like basic squares, and get a better idea of how I put these tools into action. And if you like the art you see, why don't you 
click the link below and check out our shop so you can purchase some products with the art on it. Yes, we have merch, lots and lots of merch with some really awesome art on it. Not to flex too hard on you guys. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give this a like and share it with an artist that you know that might be visually impaired and having a tough time learning how to use digital. Alright guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Take care.